Our parts inventory system allows you to create a list of parts for our software to use. When recording maintenance for equipment, you can pull part numbers from your inventory list to quickly tell the system which parts were used. To get to the inventory list, you'll click on Inventory on the left menu. The parts list is organized into warehouses and categories. Uh, you can think of a warehouse as a physical location for the part, and a category would be a type of part. To look at your list of warehouses, click on the Setup button at the very top, click Warehouses, and here you can view existing warehouses and you can rename them, or you can hit the New button on the bottom to add a new one. To view parts that belong to a specific warehouse, utilize the drop down box on the top right. So here you can pick which warehouse you want to view. On the top left, you can also click the button next to the parts inventory header to view a list of warehouses and you can click on the warehouse that you wish to view. Note that you can have the same part in multiple warehouses. If I go here and choose all warehouses, Notice that my part 01 is showing up twice. This is because each entry has its own quantity level. So even though you have the same part in there two times, because it's attributed to two separate warehouses, the software is going to try and track the inventory for each warehouse separately. To add a new part to the system, you can click the plus sign on the left hand side where it says parts or you can click the blue plus new button on the top right. Clicking on this will bring up the new part screen. We're going to go over each of these boxes here briefly. So part number is the most important. So we can go ahead and type this in. We'll put a test one in here. We'll put the name of the part, a description, Manufacturer would be who creates or who makes the part. Category, you can either type one in or you can choose one from the drop down list, which are ones that you may have used in the past. The unit cost base, so if you are not tracking inventory, which we'll get to that in a moment, every time you post this part to a maintenance task, it'll use whatever price you put in here. So if we put $10, that's what it'll use. Unit of measure, if it's a liquid, you will probably use something like gallon or liter, but most of the time for regular parts, we'll just choose each. The UPC code box is used in conjunction with a barcode scanner that you can plug into the computer. Whenever you are recording maintenance, you can scan the part in instead of typing in the part number. Underneath the UPC box, there are two custom boxes where you can type in any text that you'd like. Uh, perhaps it's text that doesn't necessarily fit into any of the other boxes. To the left, you can click on the label and type in a new name if you want to relabel the text box. To the left, we'll see a checkbox for enable inventory tracking. If this is unchecked, that means that the system does not track how much quantity of the part you have. Anytime you use the part for maintenance, the base cost will always be used. If I check Enable Inventory Tracking, then that means that the system will start keeping track of how much quantity you have in stock. You can set a stock level, and then every time you use the part, that level will decrease. Before we get into these boxes underneath, notice that there is a tab for the warehouse. Uh, it'll go with a default one. If you want to assign the part to multiple warehouses or to a different one, click on this button here on the right, Assign Warehouse, and then it'll ask you which warehouse you want to assign the part to. Underneath the warehouse tab, you'll find an aisle, row, and bin box, and this is to designate where physically in the warehouse this part is located. Vendor is a preferred vendor who you usually purchase the part from. 
cost center is a department that would be responsible for purchasing this part. Quantity, this is the initial level of stock uh, when you're adding this part into the system that you wanted to start out with. So in this example here, we'll go ahead and put a quantity of five. Underneath, we have a reorder point. This means that if the part quantity gets below whatever number I type in this box, it'll give me a notification saying, hey, I need to order more of this part. So uh, we'll, we'll do an example, let's say two. Reorder quantity means, okay, if the part is low and I go back to the vendor and order more, how much do I usually get? So here we'll, we'll go ahead and stick with five. Max quantity, uh, this is optional to set. Uh, that's saying, okay, I don't want any more of this part. If I have more than, let's say, if I put 20 in here, um, if I have 21, that I'm basically telling the system that, okay, I have way too much in stock and I don't need that many. The lead time, this is usually represented in days, uh, and this is when you order the part from a vendor, how long it takes to get in. And then the type, you have two options here. So um, first in, first out, and last in, first out. And this will be pretty important when we talk about uh, unit cost um, for pricing and for part adjustments. So let's say I have five in stock right now at $10. If I receive more later at, let's say, $20, if I have first in, first out, it will use all of the $10 parts first before it gets to the new $20 parts. And likewise, if I do last in, first out, that'll be reversed. On the top of this screen, we have some additional tabs. So if we click the Advanced tab, you have a place where if you want to set a markup, you can. You can say how long a part is under warranty. And then you can also add some part substitutions. Those are used if the part is out of stock. The system will try to select one of your substitutions instead. Under photos, you can add a picture of the part for reference. And under attachments, you can add, let's say, a, a PDF, like a manual, or any documentation about the part that you'd like to save or, or reference later. Now we can click on Save to add the part to our list. So now it shows up at the top. If we need to make any changes to the part, we can click on the pencil icon on the right-hand side, and that'll bring us to the edit screen. Or if we put the part in by mistake and we no longer need it, we can delete the part by clicking on more actions and choosing the delete option. To adjust the quantity level of the part, you'll want to click on the Actions button and choose the Adjust option. On the top, you can choose the type of adjustment you'll be making. Issued will subtract from the quantity that you have currently, and Receipt will add to it. You can throw in the date of the receipt, what the quantity is, so let's say we'll go ahead and add 10 more what the unit cost is of this uh, batch of parts. You can also include an invoice number, a vendor that you purchased the part from, and a reason that you're either adding or subtracting from the part quantity. Click on Save to save the adjustment. So now you'll see that we adjusted, we added 10 more, so our quantity on hand is now at 15. If you want to view a history of what's been received or issued, click on the Actions button, click on History, and this will bring you to the Stock Adjustments tab. So here you can see our initial receipt when we first added the part to the system at 5, and then you can see the 10 that I added, and you'll see that it was received at a higher price, at our $15. If we use the part on a work order or for maintenance, you'll also see it here in the Usage tab. You can see which equipment the part was used on. Thanks for watching. You can find more video tutorials on our YouTube channel, or for more information about our software products, you can visit our website at mtcpro.com.